Are you there, Rihanna? <coughs> Blink if you can hear me. <laughs> she's she's in the game, but I don't hear her. And hopefully it's not me, because I've been messing with my audio settings today. No, I can hear the game. I, if I can hear the game, I should be able to hear her. Oh, a message. Oh, okay. Uh, Rihanna's mic is broken, so I'll just 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 nod if you can hear me. <laughs> uh, oh, oh, oh! I've just backed into the uh, kill volume. Um, I, I didn't realize there was a starting spawn, and I backed into it because I actually want to see. Uh, uh, whatever you do, don't save this map that we're looking at because I'm going to be moving stuff out of the way and stuff. So uh, I just want to I just want to have a look at the the spawn area. Okay, pretty good, pretty good. No issues here. Okay. Um, the uh, I think you must have used. I don't know if you've used the which templates you've used, but uh, everything looks right as far as that goes. So your man cannons and all that are fine. Um, and you, oh, oh right, I'm on the wrong side. Let me try the other side. I I can't go through that barrier, so. Um, yeah, the man cannons are a bit weak, okay? You see how the man cannons drop you here? The man cannons should fling you into the game and drop you about halfway between the bomb pickup and the bomb spawn. So extend your, your uh, just do a select all on the man cannons. Just do a select all. Yeah, you see the, uh, I don't know if you can see the, the lines here, but I'm recording all this, so you can watch, see it in YouTube if you want afterwards. They should be extended out, and they should go past, uh, you see how this goes just to this spot here. They should go past the, um, oh, that's about the same, the uh, the line for the for that. It just makes the, the game start more d dynamic when when you're flung into it rather than just lobbed into it gently so you just want to move the the forward on the man cannons so that as i say you should land about halfway between the bomb pickup and the bomb plant so more more like that so let's just have a quick look at that see how that feels yeah that's better so you're actually flung into the game and you're about halfway maybe a little bit closer to the bomb pickup See, a lot of times people like going in and then three players will run ahead and one will boost backwards to intercept any uh, any quick goals that the other team might score. So that's uh, that's one thing. Your floor is, is beautiful. And... Oh, I hear some music playing. Nice. <laughs> I, I like that. Yeah, I hear I hear music playing here. Let me uh, let me crank up the volume so everyone. Can... See, I should have a forge theme playing in my forge at all times. There's like uh, thunder cracking and all sorts of cool sounds to it. So that's that's neat. Okay, I'm gonna turn that back down. Okay. Okay, so on to the, the technical aspects. Your gameplay elements look good. You're, you've obviously used the template, so all those things I don't have to check. The containment uh, is probably good. Uh, there are a few items. Uh, I'll go through the checklist. That's usually the easiest way. I'll just go through the checklist one from top to bottom. Uh, perches is, is the first thing. Anything that you can stand on above hammer range, which is approximately twice the height of the wall hop, any purchase perches above this line have to be blocked off and what I mean by perch is this see how you can you can stand up here and you can throw the ball up here if you want to frustrate the other team you can just toss the ball up here and it'll take 20 seconds to reset so that has to be either 
your choices are to push it back in, but I, I would say in your case, just do what uh, we looked up with the previous video here. I have to move this. Uh, and as I say, do not save this map because I'm going to be moving stuff all over the place. Just go in and make the changes to the, uh, the real map uh, and it'll just automatically update in the bookmark. So in a case of a wall like that where there's perches all along the wall, it's, it's pretty straightforward. You just grab yourself a... Um, a uh, invisible blocker, just grab the biggest one. A, uh, block, just grab the biggest one. Turn it slightly. Turn it slightly, and you don't have to block all the blocks, you just have to block perches. Okay, so what I would do in this case is say put it there and then duplicate it. Slap it together with magnets. Do the, you know, of course, do the same with the other side. Make it fair. Uh, group that all up. And then just play around with the positioning until... Oh, wait a second. Sorry. I had the... Uh... I had my rotation set snapped object rather than world. There we go. Okay. So just play around with the positioning and the height and the angle until... Oh, that should be go right into that other wall. Yeah, just play around with it until you've gotten rid of all the perches. So that way you don't have to change how your court looks. You've just made a, uh, I don't know if you can see the invisible bear, uh, blocker, because sometimes in forge mode you can't see blockers that other people have placed. But there's a blocker right here, uh, or you can, you know, look at it on the video after. So just, just make sure that you've got no more perches or ledges that players can stand on. And you can do it on the opposite side if there's any issues over here. It doesn't look like there is. Um... Yeah, it doesn't look like you've had any other issues other than that one. But what you can do is duplicate this, since this wall has that, that angled uh, ceiling, you can just duplicate it on the other side so that the, the cord's a little bit more symmetrical. This ledge up here is fine. There's nothing wrong with that. I don't see any problems with the ball getting stuck on anything else. As long as there's nothing on, you know, anything less than a, like a, a 60 degree angle might be a problem. So that looks good, that looks good there. Ah, here's something. You may not have realized this, but let's see if it, help, if it happens or not. This happened on another map. I would test this thoroughly in game two if you can. Sometimes these cauldrons, the, um, the fire, the area effect of the fire is a little bit larger than you might think, and it may affect players right here. And the problem with grip ball is it's zero shields and extremely low health for players. And the slightest bit of fire that sticks through that might lap through that wall will kill a player. So my, my advice would just be to just for safety's sake, just move those cauldrons back just a little bit so that they're, they're nowhere near where the players can get to them. And, uh, and you also have to accommodate that, yes, maybe the, the, you know, maybe you don't hit it in, in forge mode yourself, but you know, when you've got people playing from all over the world, uh, the collisions detection is going to be a bit off. Oh, yes, there's also there's a kill volume right there that you can't see, but it's right along that edge there. Um, the the hit detection might take a, a, a second or so to kick in, and a player might actually embed partway through this wall. You've seen players that are their feet are going through the floor and they're halfway through walls. Uh, bad connections will do that, so you have to accommodate for it by making sure that someone with a bad connection isn't going to actually hit this fire because they're they're too close to it so just move those cauldrons back just just to play it just to be safe um let's just check uh yeah as i say with everyone make sure that you your your uh, wall hop ledges work in customs like put an actual drift ball pro game type on and check to make sure that there's no dead zones in your wall hop ledge so that you check every seam like you can't always clamber in forge mode that's okay because if you go into game mode you likely will be able to clamber here 
So you just have to check every inch of your uh, walls, especially where there's an intersection, like there's an intersection right here, and where there's a seam between two pieces right here and right here. Just make sure that you can clamber on everything. And if you're finding that you're frustrated because you're getting dead zones all over the place, just put an invisible blocker that completely, like drop these walls down a bit and in a bit, and completely encase them in an invisible blocker with about you know like a half a unit to spare top and sides uh, so that they're actually clambering on the invisible blocker rather than the wall so as i say don't test in forge mode because it's it's frustrating because it's always different in forge mode actually test it in game mode so see how you could clamber there so make sure in, in game mode that you can clamber along the full length of the wedge ledge and these look okay but just make sure Sometimes when you get uneven edges like this and with pieces uh, are attached to each other, sometimes you can clamber on this wall where two pieces join. So make sure that you can't clamber anywhere on the back walls. Uh, and if you can, it's just a simple matter of moving, just moving these invisible blockers in just a little bit more to cut off any possibility that a player can clamber here. I, I'd recommend moving them in just a hair anyway. Just make these uh, these walls a little bit narrower. Uh, you know what? Actually, it's probably okay because it looks like you stuck with the, the with the template. Uh, the only part that concerns me, as I say, is where two pieces meet. Sometimes one of the corners, just that tiny little bit of cor corner there, will allow clamber like at a side angle rather than straight on. So just just check it. As I say, check in game mode. Check every inch or every joint. Make sure that there's zero chance of a player clambering on the the goal on the end walls. Uh, let's see. Um, so that covers perches, obstructions. Uh, right. These once you get these blocked off, I, I'm not counting these as obstructions because obstructions are only on the lower half of the court. Uh, those are okay. Like the rocks sticking out are okay. There's no, everything else is nice and smooth, obviously, because you've used the same place for the entire length. So, yeah, your wall's nice and smooth when you run backwards along it, so there's nothing wrong with that whatsoever. Your, as I said, your floor is perfect. Perfect, perfect, perfect. Um, just want to check one thing. Ah, oh, no, your floor is not perfect. It looks perfect, but it isn't. You, you've done, you've done the, the, uh, this this will be no problem now, but you'll curse later when this if you know say this court goes in the matchmaker or something and your floor shifts, is your floors floors and grip ball should never be grouped, okay? Like I would recommend I would actually recommend replacing this because yes it's perfectly smooth now, but a month down the road and the, your floor could just shift like uh, uh, be affected by the earthquake gl glitch because it's grouped, large groups. Uh, Large groups introduce uh, a lack of precision amongst the pieces. You could precisely place this, but because it's grouped, every time you save and quit on your map and come back in, your floor could, or I don't say it will, but it has the potential to shift every single time you save. And I've proven this in, uh, in other Forge sessions that you can place two blocks that are far away from each other about the length of a court, and every time you save, one of the blocks will shift. And, and in a group, and I don't mean ungrouping and grouping. I just mean saving the map, leaving the map, coming in, saving it again. Every time you do it, it, it has the potential to shift. So I would say ungroup, just ungroup the floor and then lock them. You might be okay. Uh, like after a bunch of saves and quits and a custom games, uh, come in and look at it and forge and make sure nothing's shift. Because the problem is, um, uh, and we went over this when uh, when we were building Avalanche, we ran into this problem and then we had to adjust for it. The problem is the earthquake glitch may not appear in Forge, it may not appear in Forge on the PC, it may not appear in custom games on the PC, but it will appear in custom games on the Xbox. Okay? So that seems to be one problem is that it looks great in Forge mode, but you might be playing a game on this and your floor could be all over the place. And the problem is you'll never know it because when you go back into forge mode, everything's perfectly smooth again. And it's it's really hard to test for these invisible floors in, uh, in custom games because sometimes you trip, sometimes you don't. But the way to tell is just memorize where your seams are and put a grip ball game type on and slide across your seams and see if you get kicked out of the slide. So just try every intersection and every uh, uh, just you know just sprint 
Um, sorry, just sprint and slide on it and see if you get a full slide. If it kicks you out of the slide prematurely, that means there's an invisible bump in the floor that you won't even be able to see in forge mode. But uh, I'd say next time you go into this map, just ungroup it and leave it ungrouped. And uh, it should be okay, but it may not, okay? I would test, and the, the way you test, obviously, is you, you just roll your, your monitor on it to see if you bump or not. So that, you, you might be okay. Uh, it's hard to say, but I, I would say just to be safe, I would rebuild this floor, rebuild it uh, using the position system to move everything into place and don't lock it. I mean, don't move anything by hand. Don't use magnets. Just spawn the item, use the coordinate system to move it into place, then move on to the next one. Uh, it's the safest way to uh, prevent your floor from uh, being subject to the, um, the earthquake glitch. Actually, they are earthquaking a little bit now. If you go into monitor mode, and you look on your on your HUD and it says the angles. This is 90.04. And so is this one. And then if they're all the same, it's not a problem. But see, this one's 90.02 by 0 0.2 0 0.1 on your angles. You see, all that indicates is that is that um, that they're different, that's all. Like if they're all the same and they're actually it's only the middle one that's the problem. From what I can tell, they're all none of them have shifted, none of them have earthquake glitches except the middle one. So in this case, I would just re, re take the, delete the middle one and place it again and then you should be okay. So that that's pretty pretty well all you need to do. Now you can tell it's shifted as well cuz you see there's a there's a overlap here and the overlap is different you see that means that it's above one, the piece the other piece here and it's below the other piece here so this it's just the middle block is shifted just slightly the other blocks are all fine so uh, i think that's it get those things done uh and uh, edit your 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 post uh the, your map submission post uh and put a change log on it just say that uh, at this on this date i made these changes and then that will let us know to uh Oh, I like your goals, by the way. Nice, nice touch. Um, that will let us know to um, to check it out again. And once once you have all these things fixed, we we uh, we move your uh, board on to the next round. Okay. So I hope that gets everything. Sorry, your mic isn't working because uh, I love talking to people rather than talking at them. But uh, uh, I think that's everything else. If you have any questions, uh, I'll give you a minute. You can text them to me. Or, or just send me a message right now and if you don't if i don't see a message pop up i'll just end this and move on to the next map or or you can just message me uh, on xbox live i'll just talk to you about it whatever privately oh i just noticed some runes nice nice stuff okay well i'm gonna end this one <clears throat> Thank you for uh, for jumping in, and uh, hopefully we'll we'll see it your improved uh, court shortly. <laughs>